This is Chris from Scientific Audiophile, and I want to tell you a little bit about the IEM. It's been around for a very long time, and no one's quite sure how it was invented. Some believe it was invented after a crash in Area 51, but some people don't believe in alien technology. However, do we really believe the government story that a 13-year-old boy working with clay models invented this tiny little in-ear monitor? Highly doubtful. Others believe MI6 invented the IEM so they could actually put them inside an agent's ear. And if the agent was a double agent, they could use such high frequencies and powerful sound, they could actually destroy the brain from within. I'm not here to bore you with the history of the IEM. One thing you should know, though, is IEM is an acronym. So don't go to the store clerk and ask for where the IEMs are. That would make you look really stupid. IEM stands for It's Ear Magic because no one quite knows how these little guys work. And for full transparency, let me make it clear that Simgot sent me the EM6Ls and they wanted my honest review. Truth is, no one really wants an honest review. There are companies that ask for an honest review and they'll tell you they want an honest review but it's really like your partner fishing for you know that compliment do i look fat in this oh you look fantastic don't worry about it well unlike every other youtube reviewer out there i have no partner never have never will because i'm brutally honest and that brutal honesty might make me living alone with my parents, which I love. But the reality is that when I review a product like these, I'm gonna give you an honest review, not a, oh, please send me more products review. It's also important to know that I'm the only YouTube reviewer that puts myself on a pedestal significantly above you. And the only person I don't put myself on a pedestal above is the wonderful queen of the king of instruments, Diane Bish. Okay, we'll do a real quick unboxing. These guys came inside of a box that looked like this. And they show you their graph that they were going for in terms of their frequency response and this hybrid design they've been pushing. The box inside the box looks like this. And inside of that, this is where they were located. You take this out. You get some accessories here and you get a box and inside the box is just basically three ear tips and some instructions and a carrying case and it's a pretty big carrying case i don't know if anyone really wants a carrying case this big for a pair of these guys but regardless it seems standard everyone gives you a carrying case it's almost something i've never used so you get it all, and that's the quick unboxing of the SimGot EM6L. According to SimGot, as we saw earlier on the box, they have some kind of hybrid design, all of which is classic audio marketing gibberish, trying to explain why their product sounds better than anything you've heard before, and they actually don't want you to listen to it first. They just want you to buy it and be like, oh, it's got this hybrid design. It's the most fantastic thing ever. But even if you do listen to it, they're hoping that there's a little market psychology in there and you'll be like, the hybrid design's fantastic. It's so much clearer, so much better. The scientific audiophile ignores all that marketing gibberish and just brings you the facts because it doesn't matter if they use a hybrid design, a classic design, or some other design. All that matters is what goes in here. And why is that all that matter? Well, how many times have you heard some marketing company talk about their new tweeter and their speaker and it's the end all be all greatest thing ever it's going to make this high so smooth you never knew they were that good and two years later that same company somehow improved on the design that two years ago was perfection so let's ignore all the marketing fluff and just get down to the sound so how is the sound they have this amazing frequency response graph, which is shockingly close to the H2019 target curve. So close, in fact, you'd think you'd hit audio nirvana, which 
you haven't. You see, in listening to 600 hours of Diane Bish, I felt that these little Simgot EM6Ls had highs that were buttery smooth. Now, not Kerry Gold Irish butter buttery smooth, but more like Land O'Lakes buttery smooth. The highs were absolutely excellent until you hit significantly higher listening levels. I'd say around 90, 92 dB, you know, distortion would start to set in. But other than that, you're gonna start damaging your hearing at that level. So I wouldn't really knock on the highs significantly at that level. So far you're thinking, what's the problem? We're in audio nirvana territory, even if we're not in audio nirvana capital. And they certainly look good with this nice design on the back of each headphone. Now, when I say look good, I mean like Jessica Alba good, not Jennifer Aniston good. The SimCut EM6L suffer from two issues. The first is worse than the second, and it's due to the design. It's that snare drums sound significantly underproportioned compared to, say, kick drums in music. Now, this isn't the fault of the engineers who designed the EM6Ls because they designed it to fit this curve. So I want you to be aware of what I just did there. I gave you a snare drum kick drum reference instead of giving you an organ reference. My manager was telling me earlier that he doesn't think people are going to understand the difference between a three foot pipe being, you know, overwhelmed by say an eight foot pipe when they should be playing at the same decibel level. But I'm really working hard on these videos to like kind of dumb it down for you. So give me a little credit there. So why did Simgot do that? Why do they make kick drums sound so much louder than snare drums? Well, it's the Harman target curve, H2019, which has a shockingly high, 5 dB higher, in fact, um, at 70 hertz than it is at 170 hertz. And then it skyrockets after dropping, dropping, dropping down to one kilohertz, it skyrockets almost 10 dB between one kilohertz and three kilohertz. So remember, a three dB increase is a doubling of the sound. When you're getting a five dB increase, you're making those kick drums sound almost four times louder than a snare drum. So I personally do not love the H2019 target curve, but these have yet another problem. A problem that every single IEM in the world has. Every single one that's ever been designed has the same problem. It might be a different way of having the problem, but they all have the same problem. In my direct comparison with one of my favorite sub $200 IEMs, the Truthier Zero Reds by Critical, the Simgots don't fit me as well. I even used the Truthier tips and just didn't do it for me. It was something about the actual design of the unit. So look at these side-by-side -side picture comparisons and you'll see the difference. These were comfortable. They didn't fall out, but they didn't fit real snug. And there were times when after, you know, a period of time, they would loosen up. You see the reds have that extra long protrusion, which helps get them a little bit deeper into my ear. Now, that's the problem with every IEM. Every ear is different. You may not have a problem with these little guys. They might fit you perfectly. You see, golden ear listeners have their eardrum deeper inside the ear than the average listener, and I'm a golden ear listener. The reason it's deeper in the ear, very much deeper in the ear, is because it's literally connecting directly to some of those important areas of the brain, which give you auditory response, making our ears significantly more capable of hearing slight differences than you are. But if they do fit you well, then it's not a problem. Maybe the truth theory by reds are too tight or don't fit right. So every IEM is different. These did not fit me exactly the way I wanted them to. And now they have one more design flaw which has nothing at all to do with sound. But it's one of those little annoying issues that when you start breaking $100, $109 to be exact for these guys, I really hate to see design misses. And the design miss on this is something you're never gonna see on this camera. I've got some high quality photos to show you the difference of. And we'll show them here while I speak over that. Yes, the cable on the SimGod is far nicer looking uh, than the Zero Reds. It has a nicer cable extender because it's just a little bit nicer to look at. It's silver and easier to find without looking at it. But even though I didn't like the Zero Reds putting the R and L 
black on black on the cable because I stated that was a bit of a pain. It's significantly superior to SimGot putting clear on clear. I don't even know if you can make out what I'm showing you in these pictures, but believe me, there's an R and there's an L on these cables. It is really, really hard to see. I believe those of you who want to hit the H2019 target curve will probably really like these. They're not the end all be all, but they really come close to the target curve. It's a target curve I don't prefer. So if you're looking for this target curve, you can't do much better than $109 because it literally follows it almost to a T. And those things that you'll notice to a T are going to be that male vocals are going to sound significantly, again, uh, lower than female vocals, especially when you get to the harmonic ranges because female harmonics can hit three kilohertz without a problem at all, where male harmonics are probably in the one kilohertz range. And we just said earlier, the three kilohertz range is 10 decibels. That's like five times louder. It's really much louder. So I strongly recommend that the male vocals uh, here will be depressed. If you're liking the female vocals, you probably really enjoy these, but they are really forward. They will be in your face forward. Now, as you can tell from my previous statements, I do like, I don't love, but I do like the Truthier Zero Reds by Critical, especially in the sub $100 price category. And I actually prefer them over these guys, not because they're better earphones, not because they got better drivers, not because of any of that stuff, because their target curve, as you can see in the comparison here, is much more to my preference. I don't wanna see that giant difference between you know, 70 hertz dropping like you know, 5 dB down to 170 hertz, and I don't want it to see a jump 10 decibels from one to three kilohertz. Not only do I want to see it, most importantly, I don't wanna hear it. And I also prefer the fit of the critical truth ear zeros. So those two things make me want to stay with those if I'm looking for a cheap, just taken around around 100 bucks or, or less kind of IEM. But the EM6Ls do have some significant advantages over the truth ears. One being very nice fit and finish. They can play just about as loud as the truth ears without distorting. But there's one other advantage these guys have that a lot of people don't understand. It's that they do cost about twice as much as the truth ears. And you might be thinking twice as much. That's a negative, not a positive. But you don't live in the world of audiophilia where telling someone you spent over $100 for something where someone only spent $55 just makes you look like, you know, you know what you're talking about better because they haven't heard them. And that way you can make it sound like, you know, music's more important to me. I spent 110 bucks, he only spent 55. And when it comes to design of, you know, materials, one thing I have to say I really did not prefer with the SimGots was that they only came with three ear tips, whereas the Truth Ears came with eight. So fit, we said earlier, is so important to an IEM and it's so hard to find an IEM that fits you correctly. So just the fact that they give you um, only three ear tips, you might not find the ear tip you want. So yeah, maybe if you have one that you already know works and it's, or a brand that you like, then you might be good to go. But out of the box, you might not find a uh, ear tip that works for you because there's only three different sizes in here. Okay, we're coming to that most important time of every video where we actually give a rating to the product. And this is the very first product in history of the Scientific Audiophile that's gonna get two ratings. Rating one, for those of you looking for an IEM that's attempting to hit the H2019 target curve. Well then, this is quite an impressive product for $109. It gets into the deep red category and everyone knows deep red is the best of all the wine rating categories. And yes, I'm gonna go with the Cabernet Sauvignon, but not a Lewis 2013 Cabernet Sauvignon. No, no, no. More like a uh, Josh, you know, it's good. It's an excellent product. Um, it's just not going to blow you away. It's not going to be your end-all, be-all, take it out, you know, on that dinner that you're having before, you know, someone goes away for like 50 years or something like that. So it's not a Lewis, but it's a Josh, and, and it's a pretty good earphone for that. So if you're looking for the H2019 target curve, uh, you can't do much better without spending a lot more uh, to hit that 2019 target curve. These are pretty good. 
uh, like I said, buttery smooth highs, pretty good mids, decent separation um, of instruments and music, and again, bass deep when you get below 100 hertz. Now, for those of you looking to get a pair of earphones, but you're not interested in the H2019 target curve, here we're going to have to say we're still in the red territory. We've dropped into the Shiraz area, and not a good Shiraz either. I'd go with Little Penguin. It's drinkable, you know. You can listen to these, and you're not going to be totally bothered by them. They're not going to like be like really shockingly bad, but they're not also going to uh, be anything you want to write home about. They're going to work, and you're going to be like, ah, you know, that snare drum is just not very loud, and uh, male vocals in my, you know, music. They just sound a little bit depressed or lower than they should be. They don't really come forward as much as I would expect them to. And that's because of the H2019 target curve. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button, like, comment on this video, and we will be giving you a lot more reviews in the future. Thank you so much. And Hemholtz is sorry he couldn't be here today, but he will make it for our next video. Take care and have a great day.